let's dive into functions. We need to um, think back to what happened on Tuesday, what we established, okay? We talked about functions as this big category. We put in, we even put down an important definition for functions. Does anyone remember? In a sentence, what is a function? What is a function? It's a function. It's a function. High five, okay. Most unhelpful, yeah. It's a relationship between two numbers. Oh, very good. Okay, so when you've got two quantities, two numerical quantities, two variables, right? And they're connected to each other. They're related in some way. Good morning. If they are related, more broadly speaking, we, we don't necessarily call them functions because they're related, we call them relations. Very good. Okay. But there's this specific kind of relation that we're interested in. What, what makes you know, any two quantities that are connected will be a relation, but which special kinds of relations are functions? What extra piece of information did we add? Outputs and inputs, okay? Now, what is it about the outputs and inputs that I want to know for a function? Yeah. For every output, there's an input or the other way around? Yeah, kind of. We're very close there, right? Um, the critical thing, and hopefully you have this written down, if I could boil it down, is um, um, for each input, we'll have one, one output, okay? It has to have only one. And so what we did was we concluded, this was right at the very end, we said, if you have like the graph of a relation, right, uh, where there's a relationship between x and y. Okay, if you have that graph, what this amounts to visually is to say if I slice through with a vertical line at any point, a vertical line, that vertical line will represent a particular input, like x equals 2 is an input, and x equals 0 is an input, etc. Right? Now if my vertical line, if I can go anywhere and it only hits the graph once, that means it only ever has one output, and that's a function, right? So you can see this parabola here is a tick, okay? But when you come across this circle, for a whole bunch of values, if I put that vertical line in, I don't get just one point of intersection. I'll, I'll get two, right? So this is not a function, okay? It's, it's still a relation. They're still connected, but not in the way that we're particularly interested in. Not a function, okay? So that's just to get your head back in the right space. There's the idea. We're now going to introduce a bit of notation and language here. Okay, now just let me make a bit of an aside. Notation tends to be a very dry thing to learn. Like, like why, why do they have to make things so hard by putting all these symbols on here? I want to try and, like, in one minute, convince you that actually it's something that's very powerful. Um, words, diagrams, and notation. They're things, terminology, they're things that appear in the syllabus which you need to learn. Like, these are things which people have decided are really important. But why? Okay? Words, diagrams, and notation. They're really three flavors of the same thing. What are words and pictures and like weird symbols and that kind of thing? What are they trying to do? All three of them have a common goal. Make They're trying. <laughs> they are trying to make your life easier. But more importantly, the way that they make your life easier is if you and I have a common set of words, we could call that a language, right? If we have a language, then we can talk to each other. And if we don't have a common language, we can't. We can't communicate. Right? Can you see how diagrams are kind of an extension of that? Right? I could say the definition of a circle is it's the set of points that are equidistant from one central location. Or I could draw a circle, right? And you'd say, oh, of course that's what you mean, right? Rather than have to unpack all of those words. And then lastly, notation, right? If you remember, uh, you might have done earlier in the year a topic where you had symbols like this. There you go. That might seem familiar to some of you, okay? Now, what does that mean? Like, there are no words there, but you guys pretty much all know what that means, right? What's it talking about? Triangle ABC. It's talking about a pair of triangles, right? You've got names for each of them, and they are similar to each other, okay? Now, I could write that sentence, right? Triangle da 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 da, -da is similar to triangle da da da, -da right? What does similar mean? And on and on. But I've boiled it down into like this tiny little space, and that's the power of notation. Okay, words are verbal, right? Diagrams are visual, and notation is symbolic. We use symbols, right? We use symbols all the time. For instance, I'm wearing a symbol right now. Um, some men at jewelry wearing types, but I'm not. I'm wearing this because it means something. Right? And you can look at it and you can say, oh, immediately I know there's what that's referring to. Okay? 
Um, I don't even need to say anything. The symbol speaks for itself. Okay. So all of these, all of these are about communication. Right? Mathematics is about more than just can I get an answer. It's about can I speak to someone? Can we talk to each other and convey meaning, really, really complex, rich meaning in a variety of ways, whichever way suits best. Okay? So that's why we're learning notation for functions, so that we can speak in a more powerful way and in a more concise way. All right? Yeah. Mercifully, there's not actually that much notation um, for functions. So let me introduce some, um, some symbols for you. Okay? Mm -hmm. Carrying on from last time, right? If I say this, y equals f of x. That's, that's the way I read that, by the way. Y equals f of x. In fact, it's so important. I'm going to write down the way I say it. What I'm saying is, y is a function of x. Y is a function of x. I can write what y is, right? Just in terms of a whole bunch of x's, right? So I might say y equals f of x, where, well, what is that function? What does it look like? Here's an example. Um, this one here, it's something like, oh, I don't know, uh, x squared minus 5. Okay, there you go. That thing over there, x squared minus 5, that's a function. I can put numbers in there. Okay, another way of thinking about it, as well as this and this are now related, is my relation, the function thing. Uh, this is kind of like a rule, right? If you give me an x, an input, I can give you an output. I know exactly what we're talking about, right? Now, I can shortcut this a little bit, right? Because the whole point of notation is to make things concise, right? So in parallel to this, I could say exactly the same thing by saying this, right? See how I said f of x there, right? Meaning it's a function of x. Well, I, can, I don't need to have this middleman in here, right? Do you see f of x is equal to that? So I'm just going to write this. Okay. Now you're actually used to seeing this. We see this all the time. It's just that we don't we don't explicitly say y is a function of x. We just kind of imply it. You see that like a thousand times. Y equals x squared minus five. But what it's code for is that y is not just another number. It's a function, and it's a function of x. Okay. So let me just write that down. Right. Y. Wrong color. Y is a function of x. Which is another way of saying the value of y depends on the value of x. Let me say that again. The value of y depends on the value of x. Now, once I say this, this unlocks some more language for us, which you might see, and I hope this will explain it, right? We've been talking in terms of inputs and outputs, right? X is our input, that's what you shove into the function, and Y is what you get out, it's the output. But when you see if Y depends on X, right? And Y and X are both numbers that can change, right? So they're variables, yeah? They can vary. Therefore, as well as calling them inputs and outputs, right? This is the X, is the input. Y is the output, right? They're both variables. But because y depends on x, y is what we call the dependent variable. It's a variable. It can change, right? Uh, there's a whole bunch of different values in here that y can take. But it depends on this guy, right? x, on the other hand, well, it's not dependent. I can make it, I can make it 2, I can make it 3, I can make it <coughs> minus 100. I can make it anything I like. So therefore, it's not a dependent variable. What's the opposite of dependent? Independent. independent. We call this guy the independent variable. If you want a somewhat coincidental but helpful way to remember which one's which, right? Input is independent. Okay? You can make it anything you like. But the output, well, you need to know what that one is first. It depends on that one. Okay, so I'm putting more language here so you understand what's going on. When you see it, you'll know what it's talking about. Right? 